All right, Vinnie Mac. Yes. Vinnie Mac. Yes. Vinnie, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Hey, man. They called me Vinnie Mac, the five-star general. I'm Long Beach's finest, man, out of Long Beach, California, man. And tell me about how you grew up. I grew up as a, a, a nickel and dime hustler when I was a young kid. I sold weed when I was young. Uh, then we, we, you know, of course, Long Beach is, is a Crip city, so I was one of the founders of the Crips back in the days. I did my hustling in the streets then. And then uh, I, I ended up learning about the game, as usual, the two books, Iceberg Slim and Donald Goins. I didn't like Iceberg Slim's book because he was trying to, you know, he, he's really mean to women and stuff like that. I'm not into that. Name, my name is Vinnie Mac. I'm a Mac. I'm not, I, you know, if I got to put my hands on you, I don't need you. I don't believe in all that type of... Uh, so a Mac is more like a gentleman pimp? Yes, sir. I, I, I could really consider myself as a professional gentleman of leisure. You know what I mean? And so you got introduced to the game early? Yes, I'm, I'm going to kick back and I'm going to take you in the ride. You can get in the back seat and let me tell you this story, Mark. I cut my teeth right here across the street. Back about 20 years ago, this was a major host role right here where your studio's at right here, Mark. I used to park my car right across the street so my girls used to work right here. To make my ends meet, I would work three or four whole strolls a day to make everything come together. So I, when, I, when I cut my teeth in Hollywood in 1978, I had a, a, a giant, a legend, was Hollywood Snake. And we was part of the old Hollywood division. And when I got with him, we toured the country together. Snake so was a pimp who had all, he was, he he had the, the, the girls major. all had snake tattooed on their face. Ah, I heard. Right? Yeah, that's it. That's Hollywood Snake and on the ankle. So I, I came up under him. You know, I, I, I came up in Long Beach. Uh, of course, I got my Stacey Adams on because in Long Beach, you know, that's from the gangsterism was the Stacey Adams. All the real gangsters were slack. Stacey Adams, if you was real sophisticated, we kind of modeled ourselves after Al Capone with the Stacey's on the slacks. I didn't have the thing armbands on here, had the hat linked to the side at the time. You know, this was in, this is all while I was in high school. I was always a really nice dresser. You know, understand what I'm saying? So what, what happened was. When I cut my teeth in Long Beach, and, and Long, Snake, even though he was Hollywood Snake, he was actually from Long Beach. And so when he cut into me, I, I, was, I was, had a couple of girls at the time. And uh, this is what happened, Mark. It was a guy that came to town. Uh, his name was Billy Joe. He came from Alaska. He was 10 deep, had two sets of twins. I admired the man so much. But you know what happened, Mark? When you admire a man so much, and you talk about a man so much in the household, he knocked me from one of my girls. And you talking about a bad feeling. Ask any pimp, when you get knocked for one of your bras, it's getting worse than punched in the stomach and the jaw at the same time and shot in the foot. You dig what I'm saying, man? So if any people tell you, they don't really talk about it on here, but boy, when they knock you, boy, it's a cold feeling. But anyway, you know, I, I overcame that. And that was my first knock, and I got with Snake, and then we ended up going on the road. We worked Hollywood for a while. We ended up going on the road. I was like five deep, and Snake stayed between nine and 13 deep. So we, we, we left from down here. We went up to Bakerfield on Union. How do you handle 13 women at the same time? Well, I only had six. He no, had but 13. I, I mean, it sounds chaotic. Well, let me, let me tell you something about that. It's a good thing that you said that, Mark. It, it, do you got to put this in, in perspective. I'm six deep, right? But I must have went through 50 women to get six girls to jail together. You see what I'm saying? Because you, you don't just get six deep in everybody's state. You got all these different personalities. Some of them like each other, some of them don't. So, you know, when somebody say they're six deep, they don't get behind the story to how you got the six deep. You go, you know, because you're dealing with all kinds of mental issues at some time. You got all these different challenges with different women and they have to gel together and fit together. Or if not, you take all them girls together and you don't really know them. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get knocked again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so by that happening, I was trying to tighten up my game. To be, but Snake was a real master at the game. To be nine to 13 deep consistently on a consistent basis, man, the man was, game was so heavy, you know, it seemed like the ground would shake when he'd walk. You know what I'm saying? I got the pleasure of meeting uh, when we was in Hollywood. I met Bishop Don Juan. I met uh, Detroit Slim, you understand what I'm saying? Some of the, you know, of course, you, uh, uh, it was Joe Cato was back in the day. He had to, he's about, and Joe Cato, by the way, is like 30 deep. You talking about deep, he was like 30 deep. With two Rolls Royce, a real master, the minks and all that, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? And if you went into Cato country nine times out of 10, you was going to get knocked. So anyway, so we, back to the story, we, 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 we start mounting up and we start, he took me, he took me, he showed me how to go international. So we went to Bakersfield, it was on Union at the time. It was about uh, 80, 90 girls working. But Snake told me, Vinny, all we do is mess with major tracks. If we want our name to go out there, we got Long Beach on our backs. We from the Hollywood division, you understand what I'm saying? We're going to take this on the road. And at the time, man, we was dressed in, since we was from the West Coast, we had cowboys hat linked to the side. We had the long perm with the shingle coats on with the dripping when we go wore cowboy boots and stuff like that. So we had our own flavor for the West Coast. 
And so we went from Bakersfield, we worked down through there, then we went to Fresno on Blackstone and Parkway. Then we ended up going up to, it was a little city called Salinas. Salinas was, it's, it's in Northern California, uh, right out of the Oceanside. Salinas was a little bitty place. It, it, the host road mark was only three blocks long. But guess what, Mark? It was 90 girls in them three blocks. And when we got there, man, it was like a lot of international pimps. I got to say, and I want to say this here, this is where I met Kenny Red at, I don't want to say rest in peace, his funeral's coming up, you do know that he passed away. I met Kenny Red, I met Gangsta Brown, I met Pippin, Pierre, Mario, all of these were the Bay Area fellas. And so we was kind of, we came together right there. And I met a couple of international players, Sleepy out of, out of, out of New York, uh, 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 Lucky out of, uh, out of Detroit, and a lot of international players. But when you're on the track, it was, it was a more of a camaraderie then. You know, it was uplifting. It wasn't, it wasn't like the game is today. So we went on to stomp down around there. Then we went into the Oakland, the Bay Area. You know, I worked up there for years. I had some family that stayed up there for about uh, 30 years. So I was back and forth there. Then we worked in the Tenderloin, you know, then we went up to Portland, you know, Washington, Seattle. Uh, at these times, all these host shows, 30, 40, 50, 100 girls on all these tracks. I never went to little small places, you know what I'm saying? I'm a major pimp and I, st I would stick out like a sore thumb, you know. I got my Cadillac, I got pimping ain't easy on the back, I got some ladies on the back, I got all these white girls in the car, so we tried to stay international on big tracks. And you've, you've, you've stayed out of prison during your career? No, 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 no. I, I, I was on vacation with the stipulation. <laughs> yes, I was. I, I, I did my time. I did the crime and I did my time and I'm back, Jack. You did? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I went through that. I went through that. You know, you're going to go through that in the game. You know, I, I was under the Mann Act, by the way. That should say enough. And, uh, you know, I went on to, that's when I, I authored and penned my book, American Pimps of Vinnie Mac Story. That's where I wrote the book at in prison. Mm. So th that's, that's where I got the inspiration at. Well, I, I took a dark turn in there when my mother passed away when I was, I, was, I was incarcerated. And so I ended up being in a federal hole for about nine months. And I started writing my book then. So the guard would come by and say, hey, what are you doing? I said, man, he said, I see you writing every day. You getting ready for your case? I said, no, I'm actually writing the book. And I told him about my mother dying. He said, I'm, I ain't supposed to do this, but I'm gonna take you in a law library and let you start to type in it, Mark. And that's how the book came about. I don't wanna get too far off the track, but since you asked me about the jail situation, I thought I would explain it a little bit more. So, you know, that's, that's where I pinned the book at, like I said. Uh -huh. And dr drugs are part of your life? No, no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really care for drugs, but I'm gonna tell you something right now, Mark. Anybody said, oh no, my girls never use drugs is more likely lying. Cause see, the dark secret in the game is you really didn't talk about what your family did. Because if you talked about what your family did, it gave the other pimp an advantage of being in the inside of your home. Of course, everybody at one time that had a drug addict or two, and I'm not gonna even lie and say I, I ain't never had one. You dig what I'm saying? It, it happens, but you know, either, either, but the, the situation is you want them to try to come up out of the game. You know, you want to try to uplift them off of dope. And then nine times out of 10, if I couldn't get, get, get them off of dope, more than likely they would run off because that's what they really wanted to do. And sometimes they were hard to manage, you know what I mean? But you know, everybody goes through that though. So like I said, once again, they said they ain't never had no girl on some dope. They probably lying. And Vinnie Mac said that. So, you know, I know you did that past interview and they, they kind of chopped the white boy real bad, but you can check my record. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm putting it down in the ground. So I'm an international player for real. You dig what I'm saying, man? What was your childhood like? Huh? What was your childhood like? You had Oh, man, my childhood was magnificent. My mom worked at, uh, uh, at uh, 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 Douglas Aircraft and my dad, my stepfather worked at Douglas Aircraft. They bought a new car. She made the newspaper and all that. I, my childhood was perfectly fine. I had a wonderful childhood. And I was a pretty smart kid, and by the way. What's your parents' attitude about the direction your life took? Well, my mother was like this because my stepfather died when I was young. And, uh, you know, she, she, she didn't really, 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 really care for it. But then, you know, she supported me in whatever I did. But you know what I'm saying? But she didn't really care for the lifestyle that I led. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I felt like kind of like the black sheep of the family, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, that was that was her take on it. So I, I actually took a little break. I had I had had some uh, two, two, two of my kids was by one of my girls. And I, when she left, I ended up having getting full custody of my kids. So I took a break from the game, took start taking them to school. I start going to college because I want to be a, you know, a good father. And, you know, if I'm tell you go to school, if I'm not going to. So that's what took me back to to college and where I took up radio te te and television and I was in marketing and sales. Like I said, I took 32 courses and learned all uh, aspects of that game. You know what I'm saying? 
But during that time, I had had a heart attack, and then now I find myself, I'm not going to college, I'm not getting more grant money, now here I'm a father, right? And I got these kids I need to raise, and then I got back into the game. Back to my mother's point, she said, you took your ass to college, you got all that fucking education, and then you got your ass back in this shit. That was her attitude, Mark. Mm. God rest her soul. What's more important to you, love or money? You know what, uh, love is more important to me than money? You can always make money. You can't make love. You have to fall in love or be in love. You can make all the money in the world, but you can't make love. You, you've been in love before? I, you know what, Mark? I'm gonna tell you something right now. I've had a, a whole bunch of women. And I'm gonna tell you something right now, any ones who whip me, I loved all my women because if a woman goes out on the track, takes a risk of risking her life, give you all her money, and you don't love that woman, you got a hole in your soul, man. And you're doing what for the girl when she's bringing you all the money? You, well, you know what, Mark? You, give her you know, a roof it, over her head? It, 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 I did a lot of things, Mark. You, you got to realize in this game, it ain't, no, it ain't no 401k in the game, right? So I would give my girls a daily allowance that they got a chance to put away. All they fall first. And it, in my program, Mark, every 30 days, I would buy my woman some type of jewelry. You understand what I'm saying? Four or five hundred start off, you know, it may, it's the longer they would be thousands of dollars. Now they got to keep all of that, their allowance, all the furs, the cars, and the money. So when they, they, when they got out of the game, at least they would have something to fall back on if they started to retire. I didn't have none of them go, go get with another pimp and gave them all the assets that they had built up and nothing like, nothing like that. A lot of people don't know, Mark, in this game today, the life expectancy of a girl in the game is only about five years. If you keep a girl past five years, you're really doing something. Because they grow tired of the game, you know, in and out and running around and doing all these different aspects of the game. And then it's dangerous. And I'm going to tell you something else, Mark, that a lot of people don't know. When I, me personally, every time before my girls went to work, I would hold hands and be in a prayer circle because I was actually raised in church. You understand what I'm saying? So I pray for my girls. And I'm going to tell you something else, Mark, that a lot of people don't know. Since the game is so dangerous, my main girls, I send them to self-defense classes. You understand what I'm saying? So if they got in any type of situation, they'll be able to handle themselves. They figure they just some hookers. Well, boy, they'll, they'll whoop the dog shit at you. <laughs> you get to messing around with them. You jack, you got another thing coming messing with Vinnie Mac's team. You dig what I'm saying, man? Yeah. So your style is different than the, the, the stereotypical pimp. Oh yeah, oh yeah, quite different, quite different. You know, you know in this situation, it, it's all about, a lot of the times, it's not all pimps, and I don't want nobody trying to you know, do no rebuttal on Vinnie Mac the pimp, you dig what I'm saying? All pimps ain't the same. Mark, you got the real characteristics of pimps. You got to remember, a pimp is a hose manager, right? But you got to realize, pimping is one thing, pimping is a job, but they're, they're men before they're pimps, right? And it depends on the attitude of the man when he gets in the game. If he was selfish, if he was brutal, if he was mean, and he got in the game, those are the same characteristics he brought into the game. You know, this is a gentleman's game, man. You know, this, this is a hands-off sports, man. You know, I'm not finna go through all that. All that. How, how would you feel? I know, how, I, know what, I know one thing. If I was with somebody and they beat me before they went to sleep, they more, more than likely they're not going to wake up. You know what I'm saying? And so I felt the same way, you know what I mean? Because, you know, in, in the game, you know, you can find a lot of cases where, where hookers had actually killed their pimps. You know what I'm saying? They had a major, major, one of the major cases here in California. One of the girls was getting out finally from, from that. And they have several other cases of that. So, you, you know, you kind of underestimate your girls. And, and if you, like I said, it depends on the man himself. Pimping is one thing, but we all men first, Mark. You see what I'm saying? So it depends on how you were. You know what I mean? How, how, is it, how has the game changed in all the years you've been doing it? Oh, Mark, let me tell you something, man. I'm going to give you the game has changed. Let me give you a couple of examples. The, the, the time has changed for one thing. And I'll tell you something, and let me put this out here, Mark. All the hookers choose their pimps, or what they so-called pimps, right? So what happens was, when, when, they, when they, they end up choosing a gangbanger, or a drug dealer, or something like that, and then they have a bad mishaps in the game, they say they hate pimps. But they never had a pimp in the first place. They took somebody else and tried to make them a pimp. That, but there weren't pimps in the first place. So the game has changed because those type of people got in the game. They didn't learn the game. See, I learned from Hollywood Snake, a true veteran. I learned watching Gangster Brown, Fillmore Slim, Bishop. I watched them come up. You know, I came up right. But today's guys, they don't want to have, oh, he's OG. Oh, he didn't want to hear nothing you got to say. You understand what I'm saying? So what they're doing is they're making up their own style of the game, Mark. And what they, they didn't put, infiltrated all of this gangsterism and, and this drug dealing and all this deception and, and being brutal mean. So they just stepped up the game real high. You know, a regular 
whole case, uh, a pimp case, you get from about 16 months, six years. Now the feds have stepped in, you like to get 10, 20, 30, 40, life, triple life, depending on your record. You see what I'm saying? So the, by, the, by them, those people getting in the game, not really know what they're doing and be getting pimp cases, but that don't mean they pimps. They just have got, it, and let me say, every, every guy that receives money from a hoe ain't no pimp, Mark. You understand what I'm saying? It's a different, that's how, that's what then, then, then got in the game. I'm gonna give you a perfect example, Mark. I was out on Figueroa about five months ago, right? I was out there with, I got some, some banners that I put on my car about my book, American Pimp, The Rennie Mac Story, right? I pull into the gas station, Mark. Guess what happened, Mark? Three gunmen ran up on my car and tried to rob me. You know what them things say to me, Mark? The police pull in the gas station right there on, on Slauson and Fig. You know, at the Chevron right there. I'm, I know you familiar with the area. And man, them guys swooped up instead of getting any kind of game, anything. They wanted, they wanted to come rob me, and they was, and they had guns. You understand what I'm saying? That's in the old game. They didn't do nothing like that, Mark. They didn't run up, running up, trying to rob you and kid you. Now, if you three guys with three guns, what do you think they're gonna do with them, Mark? That's what I'm saying. The game has changed. I'm, I'm dressed like I am today. Got the advertisement on the car. Way more jury on at the time, though. You see what I'm saying? And that, that's how it's changed today. And I'll tell you what, if you go out to Figueroa right now, you got dudes down there speed racing up and down the track, jumping out, chasing women down the track. All this just stuff that, that gives the game a black eye, man. Some people and, call, call them hoe hustlers. <laughs> I, you know what I call them? In the way ass niggas. That's what they is. They in the way. And they, 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 they got the game all blurred, man. All that is not game, Mark. That is from the guys, them game bangers, them drug dealers, them hustlers. See, what they do is when international players come to town, they don't know how to talk to you. Either they want to rob you or they want to chase your girl around. What they're trying to do is run you out of town. You know what I mean? So you, it looks all glamorous. You see all these girls out here. And, and Mark, and let me tell you something else. The average hooker in America makes about $400 a day. That's average. So you got a lot of below. And you got not, you got some above. You understand what I'm saying? The average stripper in LA only makes two thousand dollars a month, Mark. These are facts. Got to look them up. So you got to say that you, you got the, lots. So a lot of these girls out here, they getting two hundred, two twenty five, two forty. The those are the average. Now you got hoes, and you you got the gals. They got super hoes. Super hoes is just natural born hoes. They check a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand. 3,000, depends on the day, but the average price is my classification of a super hole is $1,200 a day or more a day. You're doing a super good job seeing what the average is. You're doubling over average and a little bit more. Do you think prostitution should be legalized? I actually do think, it, see, Mark, and it, that's a good question. Mark, you're a great interviewer, I like you, man. Mm. In, this, in this lifestyle, it would be better to legalize prostitution and put it in a controlled area. Cause you see, plus some places in Mexico and in, 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 in Southern America, they got one spot I looked up, they got a part where, you, where, the, where the girls that date in the car, they pull into like a farm area. And you know how you have those car washes like that? They can pull right into the stall, date the guys in a secure environment, and they can drive them right back to the track. If we could have that control situation over here, it would cut back on a lot of the crime. It it would cut back on all the seriousness to go with the game. You know, you, and you know what the longer goes that the murder, the, the robberies, the rapes, and all these type of things that would go all the way. The, it, as a matter of fact, uh, you know they they made it so uh, 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 for for uh, lording for prostitution here in, in California, that it, there's no crime no more. So they own the right track and the right steps. But I think. To get prostitution legal in America, make it taxable, it uh, create a lot of revenue for the American government in, 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 a, in a closed setting. And it would add revenue for us, and we could take that same revenue for them hookers and start put, you know, giving it to the homeless. Put a homeless something together, you know what I mean? Just to in, improve our environment, you know what I mean? So in my opinion, yes, I think it should be legal. And like in some places, you know, it's certainly restricted like in, in some parts of Nevada, you know, it's got that legal, like the Mustang Ranch and stuff like that. We need to spread that abroad, not only the Roth, but the street workers too, like I said, and have that closed environment where they could just park and, and, and date and do the thing. And it, it would make things a lot better. And all that other crime that goes with it would go away. Or most of it anyway. I can't say it would go away 100%. Pimps are one of the most hated segments of, of society. Is the most hated. Probably, yeah. 
pedophiles and pimps. Yeah. What, what, what do you, what would you say? I mean, what, what do people not understand about pimps? I mean, I know there's many different types. What, what, see, first of all, you kind of answer the question, there are many different types. You got to remember, pimping is a, is a job title. It's the man itself that gets into the game. It will give the game a black guy and make it hate it because all you hear about is they make women go to fourth. They force them into prostitution. They kidnapping them. They raping them. They, they, they do hell against their will. But that's so far from true. It's ridiculous. That's it. I would say in about, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't even give it seven or eight percent of the, of the overall hundred percent scope that that actually happens. You know what I mean? And that's why the laws are going up for people like that. But overall, pimps are not, not, I, I know I wasn't a bad person. I can't speak for each individual, Mark. So it's kind of a blanket statement, statement I'm making here. You know what I mean? What kind of qualities does, does a woman need in order to do this kind of work? What do you well, look for? Well, well, you got to, first of all, first of all, Mark, as, as I've studied this a little bit, right? A lot of women that get in the game has either been uh, molested by their uncles or fathers or brothers. They've been in foster care. They're molested, abused by the foster care system. So th those types of women come out of that strong because they have to survive all of that. So that, the, 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 so the, it has to be a person that, that that's kind of been through something to be able to go through something, especially being in this type of game. Now they got some people that ain't, not, not, everybody's not like that, but a high percentage, and I don't want to misquote the percentage, but a high percentage comes from that background. Or, you know, they came from the mother on welfare, uh, the, the mother was on drugs, you know, the speed, meth, heroin, and they grew up like that, seeing that environment. And some of them just want to better their lives. And I'll tell you what, Mark, a lot of women that be on drugs and get a, a man, they'll, they'll end up putting their daughters out. You understand what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you something else, Mark. 60% of team that I had, I met their families. And once they got to know me as who I am and knowing that's the way their daughters was, they got my blessing because you know what? I always respect to help their families, their sisters, their brothers. Some of them had kids that there. A lot of the women in the game, either their grandmother got their kids or their mamas got their kids. They get the little county check, but they wasn't getting them extra. So I would try to give them some extra money, like I said, put something to the side for them to really try to help them and their families, you know? You believe in karma? Yes, I believe in karma. Yeah. How does karma play out in your life? Well, I went to jail. That's how karma played out for me. I went to jail, it's, but it's a part of the game. That's a part. I didn't go to jail for pimping. I went to jail for miss pimping. Let's make, it, make this tr true and correct, right? When you miss pimp, you go to jail. When you're pimping right, you don't go to jail. But yeah, karma is a mother. Then I'm gonna say, when you finish by karma, all those guys that beat the women, force the women, do all those that thing that brings that karma back on you, it's gonna come back to them double or more. You know what I mean? So all they, so when they get it, oh, I got 20 years. Oh, I got 30 years. Oh yeah, well, how was you acting when you got it? That's karma. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you regret getting into the game? No, I don't. I don't how regret. Old, I, how old are you now? I, I, we, we, you know, I'm a youngster, man. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I'm ageless. You've been around. Yeah. Okay. How about that? Yeah, man. If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? Well, you know what, Mark? I, I hate to say this for you, but I, I'm, I'm a religious man. We're all in the book of life already, Mark. You couldn't change your life if you wanted to. Because guess what? It, I could have been born a thousand years ago and you could have born, been born 2000 years from now. And guess what? We wouldn't be having this interview if God didn't want us doing it here now, Mark. How about that? So there's, there's lots of drama and chaos in the life that you lead. I mean, tell me, tell me some of the stories about some of the girls you've worked with or well, some of your friends. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I've been, I was blessed to be in the game for a very long time. And I, I've only had one girl that actually got killed in the game. And she was messing with the, what the, the, what the, what's a, a mafia, I won't say which one. And when she got with me, she was dating one of the guys. And so she, some kind of way, she owed them some money. In the mob? Yeah. 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 But in the mob. I won't say which one. Right. We're going to leave that alone. But they wouldn't even take the money back, Mark. They want to take her life instead. I've had, uh, it was instances in the game. Don't want here, listen, I'm, this, is, this is a very good topic. Do you remember the Green River Killer? I don't. The Green River Killer started in Seattle. He went all up and down all the West Coast murdering women on the track. Then we had another incident in Bakersfield was another killer out there killing all the women on the track. So it's a lot of tragedy that you really don't hear about the backstory of how that goes. You know what I'm saying? 
the serial killers, the rapists, women have been you know, some kind of stabbed and, you know, in some cases hit with a hatchet. So it's a, it's a lot of tragedy in the game that's really unspoken that really needs to be talked about and addressed. You know what I'm saying, Mark? It's a very dangerous lifestyle. It's a very, very dangerous. And I want to say this here. If you've got something that's better to do, find another occupation. And that's real talk. I'm just telling you from Vinnie Mac's perspective, I don't care if you pimps don't like it or what you got to say, this is my own mouth and I can say what I got to say. Because doing all the tragedy and trying, if somebody got something to do something different, try something different. Go to school, get your education, man. Try to better yourself. As a pimp, your role is to be not just their money manager, but their... Mentor, right? What other things? Among other things, you know what I'm saying? Of course, of course, you, 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 you psychologist, you, you lover. In my case, since I kept a lot of religion in my household, you brought the, the presence of religion into the household and stuff like that. You know, you're, you basically do everything, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, and uh, like, I know you've heard this before, but your girls are like your wives. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like being in Utah, you got eight or nine girls together. You know what I'm saying? So every, all of them are like your wives if you treat, if you treat the game right. That's, it's, 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 it's a lot of game. I'm gonna tell you something else, Mark. A lot of pimps get killed. I'm gonna tell you, let me give you an instance about how dangerous it is for us. Like the statement I told you on, over on Figueroa. Now, we, we in Hollywood on Sunset, this girl, gangbang girl came by and was talking, just talking crazy to us, right? And said, you say something, I'll go get my men, here come kill all of y'all, Mark. You understand me? I left, and guess what happened? The man ran up and said, you guys pimps, and started trying to gun everybody down. So it's very, it's very dangerous, not just for them, for us too. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a lot, a lot of that backstory though, they, they, they haven't heard. They've had, they've had pimps get killed by tricks. You understand what I'm saying? Those type of things are, are, are unspoken that you know really needs to be addressed. So it's actually really dangerous for us also, Mark. That you, you, I, I've watched some of your interviews that with the other pimps hadn't talked about. So that, that, thank you for answering that question. I mean, asking that question. And Vinny, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Well, you know, you know, you know, the, the, the game, it, it, it humbled me because I actually felt for each individual that I had. You understand what I'm saying? So to me, it became a humbling experience being in the game and an awful, a grateful experience because, to, like I say, to have women trust in me, believe in me and actually virtually put my life into their hands. It, it, like I said, it was just all so humbling, man. You know what I mean? Very humbling experience, Mark. You know what I mean? And it was fascinating, exciting. And, and, you know, of course, we got a lot of money at the same time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right. Vinnie Mac, thank you so much for sharing your story. Okay, man. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you, baby. We wish you the best of luck out there. All right. All right, man. Thank yeah. you, man. Uh-huh.